Hi right, there guys, Ken here, your Thrifty Apprentice. Happy Sunday and welcome back to the studio. Today I'm going to be trying to paint a little bit looser than I normally do using two of the Prima Art Philosophy watercolor sets. I will eventually be doing a review on those watercolors as soon as I'm able to collect enough sets in order to feel like I have a comprehensive line of the paints. So I just started out by wetting my entire background and now using colors that I'm going to be using in the composition itself. I'm just spreading those colors throughout the background and just kind of letting the paint do its thing um, now I've told you guys that my favorite professional brand of watercolor paints um, up until this point are the core watercolors I love uh, those paints the vibrancy and that aquasol binder um, allows them to flow and disperse just beautifully in water and to tell you the truth of the matter of all the student grade paints that I've had the opportunity of experiencing lately, I would have to say the Prima paints are the ones that come the closest to the core as far as vibrancy is concerned anyway. So after I put down that wash of color, I did go ahead and use my towel in order to wipe up any excess water so there would be no blooming or back running. And then I took a piece of clear, um, clean plastic and laid that down on top of my um, painting and put a book on it so it'll dry and you're going to see as I add more paint to the composition the different texture that it actually added in of course it would have done a lot better if the paint had have been wetter when I put it on but you'll still get to see now after that dry I just went in and actually wet only the grapes and then after wetting only the grapes I'm just dropping in the colors that I'm going to be using in those grapes and just letting those colors run together and and blend and just do their things um, and those colors were the Pieta, which is more like a magenta color the reef which is a deep violet color and I forget what the blue is called, but it looks like ultramarine. Prima has some really cutesy little names for their paints, and there are a lot of them. Um, so after I let that layer dry, then I'm going to go back in again with a second layer of washes. Now, these washes are going to be more just a mixture of the blue with a little bit of the purple um, that reef color added to it just to darken it up and then I'm pretty much just going to go in and shade and add um, shadows into the grape areas at this point I'm not really being concerned with separating the grapes more so than just getting the color blocked in and getting it all mixed in together and you'll see that I'm adding shadows into different areas um, just so that you can you know start to see how the form that is taking I'm being sure to leave out areas where I'm going to add highlight but in all honesty I really wasn't concerned because I knew in the end I would be pulling out white gouache in order to add my highlights so I was kind of okay with that now once I actually got those washes on that grape cluster um, sort of the way that I wanted to um, before I was going to add another layer I decided I would move on to some leaves now here I am mixing to get my leaf color that goldish yellow color you see me using is called hurricane and I'm using the regular just plain green out of the classic set and I'm mixing those two together and it's giving me sort of a goldish green springy green looking color um i thought it was so beautiful and vibrant and it made a wonderful base color for the leaves so you're going to see that i will wet each leaf and then taking that color mixture that i made i'm going to go in and base down the color for each leaf and then adding more green to that mixture to darken it up just a little bit more i'm going to add in some shadows and then grabbing my credit card scraper i'm going to go in and i'm just going to scrape in the vine the little veins i said vines i mean the veins that you would see in those grape leaves and then with even more green added to that mixture making it darker i go back in to add even more shadow in to make sure that that color lays down into the area where i took that um card scraper and scraped in those veins if you've ever paid attention to a grape leaf you will notice that it has sort of a reddish um, violet hue on the end of some of the leaves so you'll see that I did take some of the magenta color and kind of go in and just outline certain edges of the leaves in order to add in that color now here you'll see that I'm working on the second leaf doing it exactly the same way I'm gonna wet that leaf then I'm gonna go in and base 
the um, first color. I'm going to add in a little darker color to start putting in shadow. Then I'll pull out the card scraper and add in the veins. And once I have the veins in, I'll go back in with the deepest of the green colors. And I'll just lay that in so it'll just kind of disperse out through that leaf and add deeper coloration to those veins. Um, then I'll also do the exact same thing by taking some magenta and loading it um, lightly on the tip of my brush and then just kind of outlining the edge of some of those leaves. Throughout the painting, you're going to see me constantly splash the colors that I'm using into the background. Again, I kind of wanted this to be loose for me. Now, understand it's not the loosest of paintings you may have ever seen, but if you've seen my work up until this point, then there is no doubt about the fact that this was definitely a stretch for me. And I will have to admit, I had fun. I love this. I loved painting like this. I loved not really being concerned with details, but just kind of going for what I knew and um, watching the painting and the composition kind of unfold and develop in front of me. Uh, now, I'm actually grabbing some of the darkest violet. Now, this is just straight out the pan, the, the, that reef color. Basically, I'm just taking it directly from the pan with very little water in it. And I'm going in on certain of my, certain one of my grapes. And some of them I'll do the whole grape. Some of them I'll just do outlining the grape so that there would definitely be a um, highlight standing out. And some of them you're going to see me just kind of, you know, put the dark shadow color in around where... The grapes would meet another grape or be laying on top of a grape or sitting beside a grape. Um, anywhere that it would need shadow, including under the leaves um, that lay on top of the grapes. Just anywhere that I felt that that darker color was needed. Um, I also mixed out that magenta color by itself directly from the pan. And you're going to see me go in and kind of put that magenta into those different um, grapes. Mainly because if you really pay attention to a grape, it does have a lot of different colors in it. And the grapes that I see, saw earlier that day, or had seen earlier that day, however you want to see it, um, sort of had violets and magentas and, and blues in them as well. So that's kind of what I was trying to pull off with this, although I was not painting from a reference photo at all. I was just kind of having fun, letting loose, and seeing what the paints were going to allow me to create. Now here you will see that I am basing in the stem and that stem is basically being done with the exact same colors that I used in the um, leaves. Just heavier washes, more washes, heavier mixtures in order to deepen and darken the colors. And um, I'll get that base in and once again I'll go around and splatter some of that paint in the background. Now you're going to actually see me splattering green on the leaves the entire time and that's basically to constantly add texture to them. Um, I wanted the painting to build in layers. Now although this paper will blend under like some other mixed media papers that I have, I really didn't force it to do too much blending. I really did just kind of stick to the technique I use mostly which is layering in order to pull off the composition. However you will see some blending but more so than anything you're going to see that I was trying my best to be as loose as possible with those washes and just, just paint and have fun. Um, I'm darkening in the shadows in between the um, grapes just so that they will stand out more and they'll look uh, more separated and more individualized. And I'm actually going to base in those shadows three or four times, maybe four or five times, just because I really wanted that color depth. Um, and I really wanted you to be able to right away look at it and see, oh, those grapes are separated. I didn't want it to look like a huge just you know, one big cluster of grapes that you couldn't um, really tell what they were. And at this point, I was sort of pleased or being pleased with how the um, painting was turning out. Um, I was really happy with that. And I decided that I really did need some more shadow in my leaves. They sort of looked just, you know, one tone to me. So I mixed up a much deeper green. And then I'm just going in and you're going to see that I'm actually basing that deeper green on top of those veins that I sketched in with um, the card scraper or the credit card scraper or if you decided to use the back of your angle acrylic brush in order to pull that effect off that would have worked just as well.
So basically, I'm just taking um, that dark green mixture that I made in with a synthetic brush. That's a round number two. Um, and I grabbed it because I knew it would not hold a lot of water. I'm just dipping it into my paint and then I'm stippling that green onto the leaves in order to give it texture and depth and to bring them to life and sort of give them sort of a realistic feel. Um, and after I get through with the stippling, you're going to see that I'm going to also splatter more paint. Keep in mind, the more that you see me splattering the paint into the composition, the more texture and layers that it's adding. It's going to help bring it all together in the end. Now I'm just going to go ahead and grab that green and I'm going to add the shadows into the second leaf. Doing it exactly the same way, taking that darker green down the areas where I sketched in the veins with the um, credit card scraper. And then afterwards, I still wanted a little bit more punch and color. So the very first base layer that I used to um, do those leaves with, I went back and based that on top of everything just to help me blend the medium and the darker colors together and just to bring the composition together on those leaves, make it look, make it look better, make it look more blended, um, less harsh. I didn't want a lot of hard lines in it. Um, then I decided that I would go in and go ahead and touch up the stem that it was on. And basically, this is just me basing layer on top of layer on top of layer until um, I got the color depth that I wanted. And then using basically the three primaries, uh, that yellow, the blue, and the magenta, I mixed those colors until I got a brown. And that brown was used in order to um, do the very top of the stem for the cluster of grapes. And then taking the magenta straight from the pan again, I'm just going in on top of the dry leaves in order to um, add that color in richer and make it stand out more. Keep in mind, in between each one of the layers, I did allow my painting to dry. Of course, you can't tell because this video is sped up um, and edited, but I'm letting you know that I did allow each layer to dry thoroughly before going back in especially due to the fact that I was using so much water on a mixed media paper. Um, and then I'm just continuing to splatter and so I get everything just kind of based in the way I want. I'm going to continue to just, you know, dab here and there with shadows, here and there with color, just until I bring the composition to the point that I want it to. Um, once all of that was said and done, I decided I needed to go ahead and put in my highlights. And for that, I decided to use my opaque um, Faber-Castell classic watercolor pens, uh, watercolor crayon, excuse me, because I knew that white would be opaque. And then I actually grabbed some pearlescent watercolors that I have from Artist Loft. And I found the darkest violet that I had in that set and mixed it into the white paint to sort of give... Um, the white crayon, excuse me, to sort of give that white crayon um, a purple tint with some glitter in it. And then the crayon itself added opacity to the pearlescent watercolor. And then I just went in and used that to base in my shadows, guys. And that's pretty, I'm um, basing in my highlights, I'm sorry. And you're going to see me smooth those highlights out. And then I'm going to come back in with the gel pen just to enhance them a little bit more and make them stand out. I've also told you guys that you can also use a water brush or a brush with water on it in order to kind of spread that gel pen out a little bit, um, which I will eventually do. I'm going to add it into the leaves and on the stems just to make sure I have all the places that I want my highlights. Um, after I was done with the composition, decided I was happy with it, I did go ahead and sign it. And that pretty much brought me to the end of the painting. Well, guys, if you like what you saw in this video, if you picked up any tips, techniques, or tricks, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. If you want to, go ahead and subscribe so that you can keep up with all of the great content I have planned to put up on the channel. Don't forget to head on over to the Thrifty Apprentice Facebook page and like us there, um, where you can keep up with the things that we do both on and off camera. Um, don't forget to use the comment section. I would love to talk with you guys. I would love to speak with you. Let me know if you tried this composition. If you're going to try it, do you have the Prima paints? What do you think of those? Um, and do you enjoy using them? Uh, go ahead and you share the video. Please, please share the video. Regardless of whether you think um, someone will like it or not, you never know. And remember, as I always tell you, as you see me spread out where I accidentally tore my paper,
Just keep painting.